It's my pleasure to introduce Jackie Berger. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm Jackie Berger, the Executive Director of Just Food, and the title of my talk today is The Way Forward, an Argument for Complicating the Food System. And I thought about why I'm framing it as an argument, and it's not really that I want to argue with all of you, you probably agree on a lot of things, but I do find that as the Executive Director of Just Food, I find myself having this argument more and more frequently as large foundations, as large government, as large agencies get into this movement, start to learn about the movement, and want to support it and influence it, there's often a push for bringing this to scale and creating efficiencies. And I'm here to champion the cause for leaving all of that out. I think that's what created the food system we have today. I think that's what created the problems we have today. So here's my, my argument. Let's start with the farm. So this is an urban farm. And as you can see, we have flowers growing here. We have all different kinds of vegetables growing here. They're growing a variety of herbs. It's a complicated system. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of structures there that are keeping um, natural predators and other um, pressures in check. So this system is robust, it is resilient, it is complicated. This is a conventional, industrial, choose your language um, farm. It looks very different. You see the same crop planted over and over again, ad nauseum to the horizon. And because it is such a simple system, it is very vulnerable to shocks, it is vulnerable, and it needs all different kinds of inputs, um, artificial inputs, chemical pesticides, and um, fungicides, and all different kinds of horrible toxins to keep it afloat, and it is still an incredibly vulnerable system. So it is still dangerously uncomplicated. So what I want to do today, this morning, very quickly, <laughs> is run you through three case studies because I think New York has incredible projects that demonstrate the value of a complicated food system. And the first case study I want to walk you through is the Kitchen Table Project Harmony CSA, which serves East and Central Harlem. So that CSA was founded in 1998, and it was founded by a group of citizens that came together because they were concerned that there was a lack of fresh, healthy, affordable food in their neighborhoods in East and Central Harlem. So they came to Just Food, and we trained them, and we hooked them up with a farmer, and they started a CSA, a Community Supported Agriculture Project, where they have this very complicated relationship now with their food. They have their very own farmer, they have members, and they have this whole community that's running this purchasing project. CSA is a very complicated way to get food. They're working with a single farmer, Claudio Gonzalez. He's growing all their vegetables, and farming is very complicated. It's complicated for any farmer, but it's really complicated for the small-scale, organic, and sustainable local farmers in Just Food CSA network, because they're small, they have to contend with pests without pesticides. They have to contend with weeds without sprays. They have all these natural hurdles to deal with. And then whether you're organic or not, you're vulnerable to the terrible rains that we had this past summer with the tropical storms Irene and Lee. And you can see what that did to his farm. And finally, it's complicated because communities in New York City are complicated. We come from all corners of the globe. We speak all different languages. We run on all different schedules. We have all different abilities to pay for food. We all have different ways of paying for food. And when you come to Just Food CSA training program, we train the organizers or core group members to embrace all of that complexity. So you can see here that they've really taken that to heart you can see this is a distribution sign. They've translated the names of the vegetables into English and Spanish so everybody knows what's going on. They have, um, they accept EBT or so people can use their food stamps or SNAP benefits to pay and a wide variety of other options to people to make sure that it's truly affordable, truly accessible to the whole community. So 
that's case one. Case number two, we have, this is Lucia Bravo. She's a community chef for Just Food at the Little Sisters of Assumption in East Harlem. Lucia um, is a community chef in the Local Produce Link program. And Local Produce Link is a partnership, and it's a program run in partnership with United Way of New York City, the New York State Department of Health, um, with 44 different food pantries in all five boroughs and with eight farmers. And what we do is we coordinate the work where they're, develop, they're delivering farm fresh food on a weekly basis to all of these pantries throughout the harvest season. And Just Food's role in this is to provide the connection to the farmer, to be a liaison to those farms, to provide farm education so that the people at the pantry who are running the distribution know about their farm. And we also do food education. And the way that we do food education is through this community chef model. And I'll explain why in a minute. So food preferences are very complicated. If you go out on the street and stop anybody walking by and ask them about their food traditions, their food culture, chances are they'll be able to talk for quite some time about what foods they ate growing up, and, and it's very personal, and we hold that stuff very dear. Um, and so when you're bringing people from all over the world to the Northeast region, and you're bringing local products in, you're pushing people sometimes past their traditions. And so we need to work really hard to take locally grown products and make them accessible and acceptable to a local palate. So what we've done is when we recruit community chefs, we look at each of the food pantries we work with, we recruit a volunteer or a staff member, and we train them because they understand the food cultures in their neighborhood. And by using traditional herbs, traditional flavors, and cooking styles, you can take a foreign vegetable and make it much more accessible and easy to um, take home with you. And again, community is complicated. So at the Little Sisters of Assumption, the community is English speaking and Spanish speaking, and Lucia is able to ricochet back and forth between English and Spanish as she's leading her cooking demonstration, so that the knowledge that she's sharing is truly accessible to everyone there. My third case study is East New York Farms. Everybody know that place? You all should. East New York Farms is in East New York, Brooklyn. It's an incredible project that was started in 1998. Um, it was launched there as a result of a three-year community visioning process. They run a farmer's market, they have an urban farm, they have a whole network of community gardens, they have a CSA, and they have an incredible youth training program. Go visit. They have incredible challenges they need to overcome because they're farming in the city, like many of you. And farming in the city means you have to overcome a lot of complications, like soil, how do you safely grow in urban soils or remediate urban soils to make them safe? How do you grow in very small spaces in a very concentrated way so that you're maximizing your production and they're growing a tremendous amount of food in East New York? And when you're right up against your neighbors, like farming in the city puts you right up against your neighbors, you need to do a lot of education because people have concerns when they see you growing food in the city. So you become an ambassador for farming by default. Being a teenager in East New York, I mean, growing up in the city has its challenges, I think, no matter where you are. But East New York has, is suffering from decades of urban decline and disinvestment in the community. So there's not a lot of economic opportunities. There's a reputation for violent crime and poverty. It's, again, not a lot of opportunities for the young people. But this program harnesses those young people, teaches them to grow food, teaches them the retail skills and um, consumer skills that you need to run a farmer's market, and uses them as ambassadors for this project in the community. And running a farmer's market in any neighborhood in New York City is complicated. But this is one of 19 urban agriculture-based markets in the City Farmers Market Network. And they have to recruit their whole community. And if you're talking about healthy food, not everybody in your neighborhood comes running. No, I'm shocked. But 
they're doing cultural programming, arts programming, educational programming. They're trying to have a little something for everyone to bring people into this market. So why is complexity good? Let's recap really quickly. It, for example, in East New York, they took two challenges, vacant lots, disenfranchised youth, brought them together to create this incredible training program, grow an abundance of food, increase access to healthy food in their community, and harness the knowledge of local gardeners who know how to grow bitter melon and kalaloo, the vegetables that people in that neighborhood really want. So they took a challenge and made it an opportunity. Um, you can also, <laughs> um, the other piece of this is these are values-based transactions. It's not just about your groceries. Of course it's about your groceries. All of these projects are bringing fresh, healthy, locally grown, delicious, nutritious food into the neighborhood. But it's not only bringing that food to the neighborhood. It's connecting you to your farmer. It's helping you create a relationship. And what that means is that in the case of that first case study, when the hurricanes and tropical rains washed out that farm, people were thinking beyond how that impacted their refrigerators. They held a fundraiser, they invited their farmer, and even though this is a low-income community, they raised $1,500 to give to their farmer to help him recover. So this is, has informed the way that Just Food has developed. We know that communities can do it best. We know you know best what to do in your neighborhoods to bring fresh, healthy food to your communities. And so we're here to provide the resources and support that you need to help every neighborhood in New York City access fresh, healthy, locally grown food. I look forward to working with you to complicate the food system.